What's up? It's been a while since I've made a video. And I'm making this video because I don't think there's going to be birthday videos this year. I could be wrong on that, though. Um, so, this is going to be new for me. Um, it's going to be more of a longer video, I hope. Maybe. I don't know. And so, yeah. You may have some guests in this video. Maybe. Luna or Shrine. I don't know. Depends on what they're doing. So basically, I got a dry mask. And many people before have asked me for fursuit tutorials. So, this is pretty easy to grab at your Target, Walmart, Walgreens, or I don't know. You can grab it anywhere. So I'm going to make a tutorial on this. I'm going to go through the whole process of basically everything. So, I'm your guide. Hello, and welcome to my room. By this point I've finished, but I'm going to put this in the beginning of the video just to give you an idea of what materials I carry around with me. This is material for the eye. I'll talk about it later in the video. Um, we got a slicker brush. Usually this stays in my closet with the rest of my fursuits, but for this purpose I'll be using it. Um, scissors, uh, thread and fabric scissors, a sharpie. This is called bias tape. It's what you use to line the edges. I'll show you. It's to line the edges of your project so that it doesn't get all gross. I'll show you what happens if you don't. You can see my green's paw. It's just kind of messy. Box of pins. I got two. Uh, I have two different types of pins in here. And these are some pieces I've destroyed from previous um, refurbs. Hot glue gun, X-Acto knife, green stuff, it's what I use to sculpt, elastic, and a bunch of thread, and a fabric measuring tape. Okay, here's my um, reference printed out. It is, this design is by my friend, name on the screen, and so. Here's what I'll be making. Usually I like to hang this up on the wall, but I'm not at that point yet, so I need it here. I have not done anything to this besides adjust it to my face. I even left the tag on. So the first thing you want to do is take this off, and we'll get painting. So what I'm doing is just painting it, and um, I'm using this swirling technique. I'll show you the difference in a second. Um, between swir swirling and just going up and down like you normally do on a painting. There it is. Um, <laughs> I've never done a voiceover before, so this is fun. How do you, um, wow, I'm so good at video. I just finished painting it all white. If you're going to have a lighter design like Aztec, um, not like this guy, you're gonna have to have a lot more white, but Take it slow, do very, um, don't do very thick, you can still see the green. And for this inlay piece, this mask piece, you can take it out pretty easily. Um, and it will feel completely different if this piece like annoys you, um, I prefer it with. Also, I've forgotten to say a ton of things. This will be the first time I'm making a video like this with time lapses and like long term video. Um, so if, if anything goes wrong, I'm going to be recording this, like, every single part of the process. Um, I'm also going to be edit editing this on my laptop, which I've always edited on my phone. So this will be, uh, like, brand new for me. I'm probably have going to have some problems with this, but we'll see how it goes. Another thing is paint the inside. Even the teeth. I haven't done that yet. You can still see that when it's done, and that kind of takes away the whole thing. You don't have to paint this, but you can paint the gums and the teeth, and they give it um, that extra. They won't see this from the outside, unless you really care about that. I mean, you could paint that. Also, you don't have to go to all the way to the edge, because it will be covered up with fur later. Alright, so I've added the second base coat, mostly on the layers that are going to have more vibrant paint. First of all, I like to pry the mouth open uh, so you can 
you can see I added the paint in the mouth. I like to sketch it out with a pencil. Um, so what I like to do is I take, I have my reference in the background. Um, you can see it. Um, I usually start with the biggest marking or the smallest marking, whatever you prefer. And I just kind of freehand it. I start on one side and I go on to the other side later to try and get it even. But you can use the sculpting on the the raptor mask to try and get your markings even. So right here I'm going to do it so, see these two teeth? I'm going to put it like right in front of this one. And that will kind of help me line it up. I, we can use the already like eye bag things, we can already use that to add our under eye marking. Okay. I sketched up all the markings. It got a little sloppy on this side, but I figured it out. Hey, it's me like a month in the future. <laughs> uh, here's me doing the colors. Um, you can see me watching Markiplier and Mariah Elizabeth in the background. I, I don't know why I decided to put that in frame, but yeah, we're just painting, painting it up. Painting the good stuff. It's all done. There's some few mistakes in like some places. Like I haven't painted the mouth yet. Um, I actually kind of like that white. Kind of makes it look like a monster can. That's what I was thinking when I put on the green is it looks so much like a monster can. So I went ahead and... Okay, I'm gonna spray it with Mr. Super Clear. This is my first time actually using Mr. Super Clear. I usually use Mod Podge, which I brought out here. Um, so, make sure to wear a mask, be in a ventilated area, like outside, and I'll get spraying. In the inside, I'll just show you. I taped up all the things, like the top little part, where the tag was, the eyes, the nostrils, and like parts of the elastic I might spray. Okay, sorry I'm sick. We're gonna start by making some ears today. And I have no foam, so I'm going to repurpose some old wings. Thankfully, the ears I have to make are pretty small. The wings are pretty cool ears on their own, but it's against the design. I must stay true to it. Could um, go a lot further and like add more foam to this part, or do what I did on the back. I just as an example, but. I personally prefer like this, even though it's like a lot more effort actually, now that I think about it. This way you can like, it's kind of easier, but I think for this suit, since it's already pretty detailed, I think that this will do well, because we don't want too much seams on the head, especially on the ears. So I shaved down where I'm going to be attaching, so it kind of lays a little flatter. Right here, this is a smooth surface. As you can see, I put some hot glue here to show you that it won't stick. So what you're going to have to do is, sadly, ruin your paint job by taking a fingernail or scissors or an X-Acto and just scraping up the surface. Sandpaper works too, to create like little indents. To give your hot glue something to stick to, though that's kind of dangerous and I shouldn't advise you to do that. So just kind of like make light marks or get a trusted adult to do this for you. So here's it all finished, you can see all that texture and that's going to make it hold on real well. We got one ear and it's not going anywhere. And I had to add some more scraping there. Um, we're gonna reinforce it in a second, but let's add the other one. Okay, I added both of them. Uh, they might be uneven. Okay. They are still in- Now that you're done placing the ears and you're 90% positive that they're even, we're gonna reinforce them to the head. Because as you can see, one of them's getting wobbly already. What you can do is scratch up the plastic inside and you take pieces of fabric and force the 
areas. If you want to do it on this part, like I'm going to do, you have to keep the mouth open so that you still have all the mobility that you have and the fabric doesn't mess with it. Pushed his mouth open with a sharpie. And as you can see, there are the two places I put the little fabric pieces. And then that ear will way less wobbly than it was before. In doing the scraping, it's important that you do it in a cross hatching pattern. So like this and like this. So then it gives it the most area and of course you could always go like this too and like this, but this is the most like a tic-tac-toe. Now that you're done with those ears, not completely, obviously. Yeah guys, it's done. You'll have your hot glue gun out and the mask part is still out. It's time to do the eyeballs. This fabric, if it would focus, is called speaker mesh. You could get it literally anywhere online. Um, maybe uh, I got mine at the fabric store. That's what I have on Caddy, Migraine, Yellowtooth, Owie, this guy, Aztec, I got this guy. I have this on everything. Even if you paint it, it's better if it's black on the inside so you can see better, actually. So get this. It's a life changer. You can also use Buckram, but I prefer this. Unless you have poor vision, I would recommend Buckram for if you need glasses or whatever. But here's Monokuma's old eye, for example. I put a screwdriver in its head to keep the elastic out of my face. Pan, and I'm going to take the extra measure and scrape up this area around the eye to give it that extra um, strength so no one can just poke the eye out. I didn't do it too much in case I want to redo it in the future because I won't be wearing this suit too much. Um, so we're going to take a little dab of hot glue and put it at the very top of the eye and then we're going to place one of these speaker mesh pieces on the top and then we'll slowly go around and make sure it's stretched out nice and then it doesn't like uh, buck, buckle. Okay, so when you're gluing the eyes in, make sure once you're done to do another layer on top to give it that more reinforcement. With my left hand, and I am not left-handed, so what you do is you just basically do this. And so the black doesn't take pencil well, so I do my sketches in white paint. Take the littlest bit of paint on my brush, and I just sketch it. So remember, when you're painting, take your vision over opacity. Even if it won't look as good, you'll want to see. I made that mistake in one of my suits that I've made before. So you'll, actually two of them, because I didn't learn from the first one. Of course, they both went to people and they weren't mine, so I can't fix them now. Hey, it's the same day where I did the ears and painted the eyes, so I'm still sick, but I'm gonna start taping. And if you don't have one of these mannequin heads, you're probably gonna wanna get one. Okay, wow, this voiceover is long. So basically, taping just gets the exact pattern of what you want, and it takes a long time, and I absolutely despise it, so make sure to have some background videos going on in the background, like Danny Gonzalez. Um, and uh, Papa John's ad, you know? Just the best content you can think of. This is so boring, I don't know why I decided to record this, but you're gonna suffer through it with me. Now we're watching Raft with Markiplier. Um, <laughs> oh, this is awful. Uh, see you guys in a second. All right, so I'm done taping. Um, I don't tape the neck anymore. I used to, but I came up with a, ha a hack for that. Marked all the markings, uh, kind of. I decided to bring the fur up because that's what it shows there on the reference sheet. So it kind of gives me a spot to put those horns and like so they're not glued and I can actually sew them because I don't trust glue that much. I want to cut off your patterns and I start by cutting out the bigger areas. Just cut the ears from the back of the head. Then I'm going to start cutting out the patterns, so I'm going to cut out these little stripes. 
And you can use an X-Acto knife, just be careful and try not to cut the elastic. I almost did that and it was almost bad. It's the top of the head and it came right off. And then you can cut, cut it out and I'll show you how to get it flat. So you just don't squish this onto your pattern piece to trace it out. Make it easier when cutting off an ear. See, there's tape on both sides. You can't really pull this off. Cut along a marking so then you don't have to do extra sewing. So I'm going to cut around here so that it's going to be sewed together anyway on this line. Here you can see I cut out the inside of the ear and then I just have the rest. As you can see, it's perfect. Like casing for your fur and make sure to put your pieces together the worst part is when you have a piece and you have no idea where it goes I had that happen with one of my suits and I never knew where it was and I still never knew where it went to when I finished the suit so label your pieces I'm gonna go ahead and label this inside ear label the fur directions when preferably when it's on this on the other side, I've labeled what material it's going to be. This one's labeled a bit more. But label is very important. You might think it's not, but it really is. Okay, so I cut out all the patterns, and I went ahead and labeled which ear it goes to. I put R, and I put the R on the ear to make sure that I don't switch up the right and lefts. And you can see all these pieces are flat, except for this one. And I'm going to show you how to get this flat. Okay, so... For this, you're going to find out where the it curves the most, and you'll kind of, once you get better at this, you'll kind of understand that a bit more. And if you mess up, you could always put more tape on the place you cut, and then it will be fine. Right here, it's kind of curving the most, and I can see this is where like most attention is. So I think that if we do one more here, that's kind of where another curve is. Yep, it all flattens out. And so, then you have a flat piece. All you gotta do is sew these lines together, and then it will go back into that curve. Um, so you can see, everything is flat here. Then you can start tracing your patterns onto the fur. So, I got all my green pieces. This, so, I'm gonna show you how I trace these on. Um, see, arrow. I like to write it on the back just just because um, it's not fun when your fur pieces go in the wrong direction. Here's my right end ear piece and you see the fur is going that direction. So your instinct would be do that, right? Wrong. Because this is the back side, you need to flip it over. So sticky side up. And so that means that would get the perfect because otherwise your piece would be backwards. Sticky side up makes it so that you have the identical piece. Tracing your patterns, make sure to give it um, a seam allowance, which basically means drawing a little further than the pattern, um, half an inch usually. Um, I don't do much because um, my stitches don't go very far because I've traced out everything, all my green patterns, I like to put them here and then once I've traced them out, I put them on the other side so I make sure I trace a pattern twice. This will be hard to do with one hand, but I'll do my best. So basically what you're going to do, I'm going to show you at the end so it makes a little more sense, is you're going to, you don't want to just do this because then you'll cut the precious fur on the back. So you're going to want to try and get close to the backing as you can and do little snips. And that way you cut the as little as the fur as possible. As you can see, um, I haven't cut any of the fur, but if I were to do this, you can see there's choppiness and the edge, you can see that there's fur missing, there isn't as long as fur, and it's it's all gross. Hey, hey everybody, it's been a while. 
and if that doesn't prove anything to you, um, I'm sorry. So yeah, I've been, I'm not as sick, I'm still kind of congested, but basically I didn't do anything that would require me to explain it because this part would have been different for everyone anyway. But I sewed basically everything on top of the head and it's all pinned down. The stitches I use, I, I don't know, you could find them online. I'm not gonna really help you with that. I brought Dio out to explain something. The best way to learn how to do something is learn from someone else. And I was wondering, how do I connect cords? Right now they're pinned on. I think he squeezed it and sewed it just, cause it's not, hmm. That's an interesting way of doing it. Definitely gives it the least amount of area that it covers. And that is an interesting way of connecting the horns. But I have two ways I think I could do this. Okay, um, I asked a friend. Can I circle on the pattern? If that makes sense? Like, I know people would. <laughs> and they said that one of the options I said was what they did. And, uh, I trust them with my life, so that's what we're gonna do. How, how we feeling? Apparently, I didn't film me sewing the horns in, um, but here's me shaving now. Uh, basically, what I did for the horns was I s cut out a circle and then I sewed it into that circle, if that makes any sense. But here I am shaving. Um, I'm trying to make it so you can see the beautiful stripes that I put in. And it's a lot of detail work, and it takes a while. You think it wouldn't, but it does, because it's not gonna grow back. So you gotta get it the first try. <laughs> it's awful. So how we guess how big this is gonna be? We put on the suit, and where the fabric ends, like right here, then we measure down and see how much we want extra to go on our chest. Here's the numbers. If you want to reference mine, this is exactly what I'm going to use making his neck. So go ahead and take this pattern, make your own. Okay, neck time. We're almost done. Here I am cutting out the neck and sewing it all in one go. And I'm watching Markiplier playing Uno. Um, just doing a blank stitch and uh, following my pattern that I showed earlier. And... I don't film it attaching to the head, but it's just a blanket stitch around. It gets very confusing, but you'll be able to figure it out. I believe in you. I believe. He is done. Um, I finished him off camera because uh, I, w I was rushing and I had to go eat dinner. And this is the next day after finishing him. Some parts you're gonna have to hot glue because not all of it will be attached to fabric. Because it's plastic, you can't sew to plastic. I mean, you can try. When I finish a fursuit, I always make sure to take a vacuum to it. And that basically just stress tests the, all the fabric. Um, that's connected to fat plastic. And it also cleans up all the loose little furs. Hopefully I remember to put everything I wanted to in this video. If I forgot something or you have a question, ask in the comments. If I don't answer, someone else will. Um, I'm sure they have better tips than I ever could give out. Because um, I've only made like 13-ish suits and uh, I'm still not that great. <laughs> That's saying something. If you could see this. This is one of the suits I'm most proud of at this point. Here's my other raptor. Aztec. Here he is. Little guy. He's all shiny. Mr. Super Clear definitely makes it more professional looking. This kind of makes it look like a toy. Um, whatever look you like best. <laughs> so we got a pair of scissors. <laughs> you can take it off with your fingernail. Yeah, I don't have fingernails. Oh no, that's not hot glue. It Up 
adorable. Okay, so I got the three raptors I made here. And I just fixed the eyes on this one so they're easier to see. Right? Mm -hmm. Very easy. And, also uh, easy. <laughs> um, Aztec and yellow teeth. It's just a showcase of the raptors I made. So you know that I just don't... Da -da -ba -da. Anyway, yeah, I don't know why I'm recording this, but... Okay. Okay, and that's it. Um, seriously, if you guys have any questions, if I was too brief, ask me questions. I will try my best to answer them, unless it's like a year in the future. Then I probably won't. <laughs> I know I've asked you guys to ask me questions for this video a long time ago, and I tried to get to most of those, but if I did not get to yours, ask them again, and I'll try my best to explain them in text.